The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the loss to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey everyone and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Nathan. And this is Charlie. We're your host for today. And our good friend and ministry partner is joining us. His name is Santiago Fuentes. Uh, He actually lives in Mexico City. You've heard multiple episodes with him in the past. Uh, A recent one was on Christianity in Mexico and what you maybe had never heard before. Uh, It was fascinating to discuss that. So Santi, thanks for joining again. Yes, thank you for having me here. Always a pleasure. Well, I'm really, really excited um, about today and what God has put on your heart. Uh, so let's dig into it. Yes. Please, uh, Charlie, can you please read Psalm 17, verse 8? Yeah, so Psalm 17, 8, uh, David writes, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Mm. Have you ever thought about what that means? Yes. <laughs> It's kind of a common turn of phrase in the United States. Is it? Keep the apple of your eye. Mm-hmm. But biblically speaking, or even, we, we understand the, the connotative meaning. Like we understand kind of at a guttural level, the apple of your eye is someone you really like or love. Okay. But I don't know if we really fully understand what it means. Well, that's a phrase then that applies to America in that sense. But... What was really eye-opening for me is when I found out what I what it means. No pun intended. This song. <laughs> Sorry. No pun intended that your eyes were opened to it. <laughs> uh, oh well. No, I'm not that smart. To <laughs> I was. I was also wondering, like, are we talking about like red Fuji apples or <laughs> apple crisps, honeycomb? But maybe that's not what he's talking about. It's here. not what he's talking about. Because <laughs> I most of the time I'll tell you, yes, I've thought about it, but most of the time in the past I've wondered. Is it like an apple? Like like I'm looking on a tree and that's the apple of my eye? And uh, <laughs> I wonder if when... All. I think when we read this, maybe most of the time, if we don't pause, we may think like, oh, you're looking at an apple or something. Mm-hmm. 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 Or maybe that's a part of your eye, right? I'm not a doctor, so maybe there's something oh, yeah. in my eye that it's called the apple. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eye, like you know? that. your voice box is sometimes called the Adam's apple. That's right. Yeah. So, so is, the, is the apple Eve's apple? <laughs> my goodness my 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 how we have gone off on a bunny trail we have we have so let me tell you why i, I came to this this scripture i've read it many times before of course but um it was during covid that i was really struggling like mm-hmm. maybe some people can can identify with that just uh, thinking about the future what's uh what's ahead mm-hmm. what's going to happen with my wife with my daughter with my own life uh, what if the Lord calls me today? What kind of uh, what kind of record is going to be there? Uh, will I be rewarded greatly or just barely made it to heaven? Mm. You know, and I was wondering and pondering about what kind of life I lived, mm. uh, what kind of uh, ministry I've done uh, for Jesus. Uh, not just a formal ministry, but everyday, ordinary ministry, as yep. we uh, teach all the time. And so, I was scared hmm. of maybe the legacy I'm I'm leaving behind is not the best. Maybe I've I haven't done my best job as a husband, as a dad, as a speaker, as as a minister, as as a friend, as neighbor. You name it. Yeah. It was overwhelming for me, and so went to the scriptures, started uh, reading through this passage, and you have my, my Spanish Bible here in front of you, mm. and you can see the, the copios. Yeah, copious notes. Copious. There you go. <laughs> notes. <laughs> the obscene amount of notes, you could say. <laughs> Come on. In a, in a good way. <laughs> well, I hope so. Uh, and so, started working on this passage, and realized that David, although we don't know exactly uh, 
the time when he wrote this song. Mm. It was a time when he was, uh, his life was in danger. Mm. And, and I mean, it's David. His life was in danger pretty much since he was a teenage boy, right? So when did he write this <clears throat> song? We don't know. Keep that in mind. This is a song. And, and because it's a song, it uses some words like contemporary songs, like uh, metaphors, mm -hmm. right? And so he's using a metaphor here. And what I want you to realize is that the second phrase of this of these, uh, verse 8, of Psalm 8, uh, really clarifies for us that David is desperately seeking God's protection. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's why he says, uh, "Escóndeme bajo la sombra de tus alas." What does that mean? From the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me. <laughs> Sorry, you read the wrong, wrong verse. <laughs> <laughs> hide, hide me, hide me in the shadow of your wings. There you go. Okay, there well, go. I just read the verse right after that. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. That's the one I wanted. Because there's wicked ones trying to do violence. Around. You just made a mistake, and that's fine, brother. Hey, well, <laughs> I make many, so <laughs> we all do. Uh, so, hide me under your wings, protect me, right? Mm -hmm. Like the hen protects its chicks. Yeah. Um, Which is a real thing for those of you who've never seen a chicken. Oh, yeah. Hens will re legitimately put their chicks under their wings. Yes. And it, yeah. Some of them almost disappear into yeah. the feathers. Like, you would look at this chicken and not see any chicks, and then they move, and there's like five little chicks running around. Yeah. That's, and that's beautiful. Yeah. What you just said. You disappear, and... And here's where you are mm. in those moments. The first phrase of that is this that we're talking about. Keep me, what? Like the apple of your eye. Yeah. Right? So what that means is keep your eye on me, Lord. Mm. Let me share this story. I took my daughter to this playground. And, and there were so many things to do around there. Some things she already knew, like slides and swings, but these other uh, things you have to climb on and, you know, those, those newer uh, playgrounds, how they have all these fascinating things. Now, remember, I'm 44 years old. Yeah. We survived the rough playgrounds, <laughs> right? When you could have uh, break an arm and, and things like that. And, uh, but but now they're they're mo mo much much nicer. That's true. What I remember growing up, and some of the playgrounds would be like a straight <laughs> metal slide. <laughs> so when it's a hot sunny day, you could cook an egg on it. That's right. And could cook some other things too if you go down the slide. And uh, I remember that it was made out of wood, dark brown wood. And if you rub up against it, your hand would be full of splinters. Now it's like smooth plastic, but. Uh, I yeah we had we lived in some dangerous times. We, we we did <laughs> in my day and time as a kid. Some of those slides were made out of concrete. Wow! Now that's so another level. Right run there. around those things and trip and fall oh. with your face on those things. You you gonna have a hole in your face? That's right. So, <laughs> took my daughter to the playground and and she was uh, just experiencing new things, climbing things. But she turned and said, "Daddy, are you?" Looking at me, mm. she was wondering. Yeah. She was scared. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm looking at you, honey. I'm here. Mm. And she moved around and 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 went uh, to the other side of this of this uh, playground. And she behind <coughs> this this slide, I see her face, mm. just looking at me. If I was really keeping an eye on her, what David is saying is. Please keep an eye on me. Mm. But here's the thing, and, and this is fascinating to me. It's not just look from afar. No, I want you here. Yeah. So close, mm. so close that the silhouette of my body, I can see it in your eye, God. Because mm. you can see things from the distance, but you won't see the silhouette of things in your eye if they're too far away. Yeah. Right? But when you keep an eye on something so close to you that you can see the silhouette or somebody else can see the silhouette of that thing or that person in your eye, that means you're really, really close. Right. Like I, you have to be like two, three, four inches away That's in right. order to see your face, facial reflection mm -hmm. in the eye of the person that you're looking at. Exactly. Yeah. So what David is saying 
now that I'm in danger, now that my life is at, it's at risk, mm. please stand by me so close that, that I mm. can see my silhouette in mm. your eye. That's, yeah, and I love the picture of a kid, a young child. Uh, they, they want to wander a little bit to feel like they're free, but they don't want you to leave them. Exactly. Mm. They'll always be... I, I heard someone say they had read uh, about parenting and studied it and the psychology behind children and all this and that. And those children who are most secure and feel most loved are those like that have the freedom to walk forward, but they know their parent is watching. So there's a boundary, but they're free. Those who like just let their kids free completely and are not watching them, don't have the boundary, aren't like, hey, I'm here with you, yeah. those are the most insecure kids. Yes. They're like, out there, is my father watching? Am I okay? I don't even see him anymore. And can, I sh can I share something about what you're saying? I see my daughter uh, in that stage where she's exploring the world, discovering yes. new things, but she wants to know you're there. Yes. Mm. Even at home. Yes. yes. Like, if I'm in the kitchen with my wife uh, helping, you know, fix dinner or something, and she's playing in the living room, <clears throat> from time to time she'll open uh, the door and come and see inside the kitchen just to make sure we're still, still there. there. Mm. I, I remember being a kid and, like, playing or whatever, and I'm all infatuated with whatever I'm doing in front of me, and then all of a sudden I'd be like, wow, it's quiet. Where'd mom and dad go? I go running all through the house. Mom, dad, where are you? Where are you? I was a little anxious. So, like, I'd start to cry sometimes, you know, just like a little, little kid. I just remember that feeling of, like, oh, I found them. Yeah. And that peace that yeah. just washes over and you. I think another step further with this as well is the concept of sight and seeing. Uh, like, with my daughter, as I'm thinking about, as with your Santi, as well, or how we felt, um, she'll grab, like my hand and want to bring me into the same room to be watching and to be close but if I'm reading or on my phone or something it doesn't count mm -hmm. she wants to see mm -hmm. that I'm literally watching what she's doing like look see what look do you see this doll that I'm playing yeah. with do you see this book that I'm picking up like if I'm not seeing it it's not enough mm. has she ever uh grabbed your phone and put it down for you? Yes. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I, I totally relate with you. Yeah. And and those are the moments when you're like, oh, goodness, I'm doing this wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. I need to and pay attention to we you. We praise God that he is our father who... Is I, not distracted by a phone. We don't have to come to him and say, can you put your phone down for me for a moment? Oh, yeah. We, he's, it makes me think of this Bible story. Um, two stories have come to mind as you're sharing. One is with this, uh, when Elijah is going up against the prophets of Baal, mm -hmm. and he's mocking them. <laughs> oh, is your God going to help you? I think he must be using the toilet somewhere. He's yeah. too busy for you. Mm -hmm. And they have to slash themselves and do all these crazy things to try and get the attention of their God. And Elijah is secure oh. because he knows his God is watching. And in a moment the fire comes down and consumes the altar and all the water. He dumped buckets of water, filled the trenches. <laughs> In a moment, God saw him and was watching. Your, your father knows everything you need, even yeah. before you say it. Oh, th uh, Jesus said that. Uh, he's <laughs> watching. Yep. So, here's, here's uh, two cross-references to this. Um, Deuteronomy 32, verse 10. He found him in a desert land and in the howling waste of the wilderness. He answered he encircled him, he cared for him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. Mm -hmm. he's, got, he's, he's talking about God keeping Israel safe through the desert. Now, why were, there, were they wandering in the desert? Because they disobeyed. Because they disobeyed. Did he remove his care for them? Oh, no. Not at all. It's what he's saying here. Right. And many times we believe, oh, I messed up. God must be so angry at me that mm. he's not even paying attention to me anymore. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. You're his child. Mm. I imagine that mm. you guys as parents would say emphatically, there's nothing your daughter could ever do no, no. to make you turn your back on her. No. I mean, 
Like, you you could get hurt or you could get disappointed or whatever, but you'll never abandon, as good dads, you won't ever abandon your kid no matter what. According to the scriptures, we, we may be the best. I won't say I'm the best, but let's just say... You might be the best. Santi might be the best father there is. Uh, no, I might I'm be not. a good I'm father. Not. But let's just say that. We could be the best of the best. And the scripture still says we're evil fathers oh, compared yeah. to the That's heavenly true. To the good father. father. Like, true. if your fathers on earth, it says, will give you bread when you're asked. Like, they're not going to give you a stone. They're not going to give you a snake. They're going to provide for you. Even good fathers on the earth. Like, it says, even if these evil fathers will give you this. Father of the year. Compared to God, is evil. evil. Nothing. Easy. So, uh, it, but uh, before we get too far, oh, you had something you wanted to say. Go ahead. Uh, I'll get to it after. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm curious. How did you come to the conclusion that being the apple of God's eye means we're really close to Him? Like, how did you learn that? Well, just through studying the Bible, okay. like really digging deep into it and understanding the context, He's seeking for His protection. Right. Keep me. Uh, mm. at sight mm. keep your eye on me mm. but the only way the only way that you can see your reflection in somebody's pupil right is if you're really close if you're really close he's, so, he's asking God please be so close to me because my enemies those guys are close to me right I want you closer than them so would you say this apple of the eye is the pupil or it's the reflection of the pupil or is it a Hebrew idiom mm -hmm. that that the Jews would often use and we're supposed to understand that it has a Hebrew meaning because it's a, an idiom they would often use? Well, I mentioned Just already. like in America, we use the idiom, break a leg. Mm -hmm. Like, if you were to read that a hundred years later, you'd be like, why did he say break a leg? Mm -hmm. And we're like saying, no, go do a good job. Right. So well, is it something like that, do you think, that they would say this phrase often and they knew the meaning? Yes, because they... they under the context of seeking somebody's protection, I read to you also Deuteronomy 32.10. Right. It's the same yeah. context of protection. Yeah. So this is a, a, a Hebrew expression of saying, I'm really keeping a, a, a watchful eye mm. on you. Mm. I'm really close. Uh, so whenever you need it, it's like, um, like Psalm 121, the Lord is my shadow. Mm. At my right hand. Uh, He's so close to me like my yeah. shadow. He's shadowing me. Mm. When I worked for a, a telemarketing company, we had shadows mm. who, who sat right next to us so that they could see whatever we were typing on our hmm. computers and to listen to every conversation so they, so they could uh, learn the job. So that's your shadow. Yeah. When, when, when uh, Psalm 121 is saying, I want you to be my shadow, I want you to be close to me. Just be near me. Yeah. And this is the same concept. But That's here's here's interest. Interesting. Here's something interesting. For God to be so close to us, we think we tend to think that it's only those that in our eyes they, they seem to have it all together. Mm. Perfect people. Mm. People that really live in holiness and their love for God is so evident, but let me let me read another uh, verse. This is Psalm thirty-two, eight. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Mm. This is another confession uh, psalm, mm. right? With uh, David is the author of this, and he's. It's like God is responding to him with these exact words. Yes, you messed up. I will instruct you. I will teach you. I'm going to be near you to hmm. teach you how to live from now on. Cool. So, under protection and under instruction, you have God so near to you. Hmm. So, I mean, there are many other ways uh, we could uh, exemplify this, but I'm I'm really, um, I'm thinking about two people that might be listening to this, mm. people that are afraid like I was, 
uh, during those dark days, some some dark days, cannot say that it was the whole time, by God's grace it wasn't the whole time that I experienced that uh, fear and anxiety, but during those dark days I was seeking for uh, protection mm -hmm. and comfort, founded on this verse. And going back to it, that's why you see so many notes here because I went back mm, over good. and over again, and 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 this concept of God being near, I think we need to remember God is a spirit; mm. He's not contained, so He's not uh, attached to a geographical position. Right, He's everywhere. His body, his, he doesn't have any skin or bones to contain him to a particular location. No characteristics of matter apply to God. Yeah. Weight, height, color, smell, nothing, because he's spirit. Mm. So when you talk about God and you think about he's near, you cannot think about it in terms of geographical position, but of relationship. Mm. So That's good, yeah, that's... That's, I think, highly important. Um, I would even say some of the moments in my life that I felt the most alone, the most lonely, uh, the most discouraged or, or frustrated um, when I felt that maybe others were coming against me and I didn't know how I was going to move forward. It was this concept that lifted me up to keep me going and nothing else and I was just thinking this scripture had come to my mind 2 Timothy chapter 4 uh, verse 16 and 17 Paul the apostle himself had faced this mm -hmm. he says he's in prison when he writes this and he says no one no one came to stand by me mm -hmm. but all deserted me so we may face times when our community deserts us mm -hmm. and they won't stand by us. They may be good, godly people and they desert us. Our community is good and we're to engage with the gathering of the believers and they're to point us to Jesus, but at times we may feel alone. And Paul says, but the Lord stood by me mm -hmm. and strengthened me. And he continues, so that through me the message might be proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. So no one stood by me, but the Lord stood by me. Hmm. And that's almost like this, like, hey, all these people missed me. Like, they left me, they deserted me, but the Lord had me as the apple of his eye. He was watching. He was with me. Hmm. Uh, and not only Paul, but our Lord Jesus himself faced this. His best community his disciples who he was training, the men he spent every day with for three years deserted him mm -hmm. in the garden. And I think Yet his father was there. We're, we're getting to something here that I think is extremely important. This is a great uh, passage at the end of Paul's life. Yeah. Close to the end of yeah. Paul's life. <clears throat> what about Acts 18 when he's planting the church in Corinth and things are so tough. Uh, that he's just afraid. I mean, imagine yeah. Paul being afraid. Mm. This is a tough guy, yeah. right? And the Lord appeared to him in a vision. It says, Acts uh, chapter 18, verse 9, and told him, don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent. For I am with you. For I am with you. So, Verse 11, I'm going to skip to verse 11. So Paul stayed there for the next year and a half, teaching the Word of God. Mm. He was just about to give up when the Lord appeared to him. And the, yeah. the, uh, the reality of God's presence yeah. with him took him through that stage in his ministry wow. and empowered him. Isn't that what we're... Oh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, it, all the time seeking out. In, intimacy with God is like the very basis of... I mean, our the president of Forge, or founder, uh, he says that the greatest gift you'll ever give this world is your intimacy with God. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't agree more. Like, ultimately, it's that intimacy, <clears throat> that closeness with God that gives rise to 
the transformation and in this case the courage and the 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 boldness and even the words to speak in these difficult difficult moments those those that uh, have messed up have a word from God mm. Psalm 32 saying I am with you I'll teach you yeah. do it better next time those who are afraid have a word from the Lord Psalm 17 8 saying I'll keep an eye on you mm. those that are afraid right and those that need courage to to do ministry on a daily basis everywhere mm. they have a word from the Lord I am be, I'm gonna be with you mm. didn't he said that Matthew 28 before he ascended to heaven to his disciples for I am with you mm. till the end so and that's like what he emphasized said behold Mm. I'm with you. Like, take note. Listen. Pay yeah. attention. Mm -hmm. I am with you always to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. So, how important for us then is just to embrace, mm. acknowledge. We don't create it. We just acknowledge the presence of God with us every day. Mm. Living, living with the conscience that here He is. He is with me. He is by my side. He's at all times with me. Hmm. What would you dare to do if you knew God is with you? Amen. If yes. He was with us and for us, who could be against us? There you go. Hey, that's in the Bible too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're out there thinking to yourself, man, I'm all alone and uh, God doesn't see me, just know that as a follower of Jesus, you are the apple of God's eye. He's so close to you that you would be able to see your reflection in the in his uh pupil. in the pupil like that is deep that is close maybe yes. you should go stand in front of a mirror and look at your own pupils and be like that's how close he is mm. or if you have a spouse <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go look in their pupils and say god is this close Amen. and even closer and he's watching santi thank you so much uh, this you, uh, this is just refreshing to learn something about intimacy and uh, just how much God cares for us and loves us and desires to be up close to us. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure talking to you too. Man, it's a joy. And uh, I might go eat an apple after this, thinking about being the <laughs> apple of God's eye. Even though it's different, I understand. I don't know, maybe you have a honey crisp apple. That might be kind of nice. But uh... <laughs> Look in the mirror, like you say. I'll do both, okay. <laughs> well, uh... Uh, thank you guys for joining this episode of Fuel for the Harvest. Uh, we really appreciate you listening and tuning in. Uh, it's been a, a really exciting season of ministry for us. Uh, we've been traveling around. We're recording this right now as we sit in South Carolina with a team of young people who are being trained up to be kingdom laborers, and they've been sharing the gospel this week and seeing incredible fruit. Uh, God has been impacting their lives, setting them free of darkness and calling them uh, to everyday laborership wherever their feet go, and some of them even to the unreached, to the ends of the earth. Uh, so I'm excited that you're listening and that you can be a kingdom laborer wherever your feet go, making an impact in everyday places and, and fueling the Forge laborership movement all over the globe. Uh, so if this has really impacted you or sticks out to you, we would be so thankful if you shared on social media or posted about it, shared the link with your friends, sent it out on a text, and uh, spread the word. And if you don't mind unsubscribing and resubscribing, it continues to spread the algorithm and, and get the word out there so more people can be impacted and join the laborship movement. Thank you guys for listening in and God bless you. See you next time.